The movie opens in a laboratory in Seoul, where we see a terrified doctor named Yang. It turns out that his daughter died recently, so he's conducting experiments on her to bring her back to life. He's surrounded by lizards and alligators, which suggests that they're also being used as test subjects. At that moment, several officers arrive and tell him that many people have already died as a result of his experiment. Dr. Yang claims he's on the verge of a breakthrough and injects himself with something. Seeing this, the officers shoot at him and claim they will take his daughter away. Suddenly, a massive earthquake strikes, which ends up devastating the entire nation. The scene then shifts to three years later, and we see that the place has turned into an open wasteland, with all modern civilization gone. To make matters worse, some of Dr. Young's test alligators, which have been injected with a special serum, are let out in the open to grow and procreate. Moments later, we see a boy named Ji Wan, who arrives with arrows and hits an alligator in the eye. The alligator pretends to be dead, and when Ji Wan gets closer, it brutally attacks him. So he retreats inside a car to protect himself, but the alligator pursues him and almost kills him. Fortunately, a man named Nam's son arrives at the moment and immediately cuts the alligator in two pieces with his sharp blade. The duo then packs the alligator, claiming it will be very delicious. In the next scene, we see a girl named Suna, who lives in a small hut with her grandma. Their living conditions are miserable, and they do not even have fresh water to drink. Her grandma's worried because there hasn't been any rain in six months and wonders how they'll survive. However, Suna tells her not to worry and promises they will find a way. Afterward, Jiwon and Nam Soon arrive at a market, where they cut up the alligator and exchange its pieces for some useful items. Moments later, Suna also arrives with her grandma, and we learn that Ji Wan has a big crush on her. She gives Nam Soon a sketch she made of him and thanks him for saving her during the earthquake. Seeing this, he gets very happy and gives her a big piece of meat. Just then, some thugs show up and begin terrorizing the people. They claim to be cops and show a sketch of the person they're looking for. They take anything they want, and when a man intervenes, they quickly chop his hand. Moments later, one of them notices Suna and decides to take her with them. Seeing this, G1 goes to fight with them, but they end up brutally beating him. So Nam Soon steps in, and he beats all of them till they can barely stand. He then notices the clean water bottles with them and asks where they got them. A thug tells him about an apartment with clean water, but claims that only a few chosen ones are permitted to enter that facility. He asks why they're there, and the thug claims they were sent to get supplies by their boss, Tiger. After the thugs leave, the duo also collects their belongings and leaves. On the way, Ji Wan suggests they look for that apartment so they can have clean water, but Nam Soon dismisses his idea. Soon after, they arrive outside Suna's house, where they notice a group of unfamiliar people. So, they approach Suna and ask if these people are bothering her. The group is led by a woman who introduces herself as a teacher and claims they're not here to hurt anyone. She says that they're from a community that has been living in an apartment building located some distance away from this place. She claims that this place has various luxuries, including a plentiful supply of clean drinking water. She mentions that they're seeking more people to take back to their apartment and that children under the age of 20 and their parents are the only ones accepted. Suna asks if Nam Soon and Ji Wan can accompany them, as they're like family to her. However, the teacher denies them, claiming that only immediate family members are accepted. Hearing this, Nam Sun advises Suna to leave because if she stays, more bandits might come back and try to hurt her. Following this, Suna and her grandma bid their farewell to the guys. They then leave with their teacher's group, and they have to cover a very long distance. On the way, Suna notices that the soldiers with them seem strange, and they have peculiar blisters on their necks. Sometime later, her grandma becomes very tired of walking, so the teacher suggests they have a nearby medical facility where they can take her for rest. Suna reluctantly agrees, and the soldiers escort her grandmother and another old man away from the group. However, soon after, the group comes across a car, and Suna thinks it's strange that cars were waiting for them only a short distance away. 
She wonders why the teacher sent her grandmother away when they had a car available. Hearing this, a guy named Sergeant Kwan says that they can wait for her grandma if she wants. However, the other people are becoming increasingly thirsty and restless, so they decide to continue moving forward. In the following scene, the two soldiers take the old people to a remote location and immediately attack them. At that moment, Ji Wan arrives and witnesses them murdering Suna's grandma. So he attacks these soldiers immediately, and Nam Sun also arrives to help him. However, as they fight, they realize that these soldiers are nearly immortal, as they do not die even after receiving the most severe hits. Ji Wan ties a soldier with a rope and questions why he killed his grandma. But the soldier cuts his own leg and frees himself from the rope. He then begins attacking Ji Wan, but a woman named Ian Ho appears out of nowhere and cuts off both soldiers' heads. After they bury the grandma, Yan Ho informs them that these guys can only be killed by decapitating their heads, otherwise they cannot die. She tells them that she used to be in special forces and that after the earthquake, her team found an apartment that was the one place that wasn't crushed. There was enough pure water to drink, so they settled there. One day, a man named Dr. Yang arrived and started living with them, but since his arrival, many children began missing one by one. So she soon confronted him and learned about his dirty secrets. He was working on an experiment that would provide people with immortality. He saw himself as a messiah, seeking to redeem humanity. Thus, he used those children for his dangerous experiments. Apparently, their pituitary glands contained something critical to his research. When she learned that even her boss, Sergeant Kwan, was with the doctor, she became furious. She tried to stop them, but they attempted to kill her, so she had no choice but to run away. Therefore, she now asks Nam San for his help in bringing the doctor down and rescuing her former co-workers who are trapped inside. Hearing this, he agrees to help her fight against the doctor, but only because he wants to rescue Suna. Afterward, the three head to meet the local gangster, Tiger, who has connections with people living in the apartment. It turns out that he and Nam Soon have a history, as they used to fight in the boxing ring, and it was because of him that Tiger's career came to an end. So, upon seeing him, Tiger immediately tells his minions to kill him and promises them many slaves in exchange. However, these men prove to be no match for Nam Soon, who effortlessly takes on everyone and eventually attacks Tiger. Meanwhile, Suna and the group reach the apartment, where Dr. Yang gives them a welcome speech. She asks about her grandma, and the teacher assures her that she'll arrive soon. Just then, Dr. Yang announces the scores of the kids, and it turns out that if they get good grades, they will have better facilities. They're given a drink, and everyone is excited to finally have clean water after a long time. However, Suna feels strange and decides not to drink the water. They are then taken inside, and it's explained that the children will be on the eighth floor, where parents are not allowed. Once the children leave, the parents are tasked with purifying all the water in the building manually to make it safe for drinking. They're instructed to run the purification process continuously for their children's sake. On the other hand, Nam Soon beats Tiger and his henchmen and questions them about the clean water. Tiger admits that they got this water from the building where he supplies many things, and sometimes people as well. However, he claims that these days they demand to bring children, which is why his men went to the village that day. Hearing this, Nam Soon orders him to take him to that place first thing tomorrow. Meanwhile, Suna is in a class with other kids and finds everything strange. She observes that the students have a peculiar cut on their necks and seem oddly submissive and slow. When Dr. Yang arrives, she decides to be blunt and asks about her grandmother. He informs her that her grandmother is sick and being treated. She insists on visiting her, but he refuses and claims it's not allowed. He informs her that she looks very malnourished and asks her to drink a bottle of clean water. She lifts the bottle to drink, but when he leaves, she puts it down without taking a sip. That night, after everyone is asleep, Suna leaves her bed and starts exploring the area. Downstairs, a parent is demanding to see their daughter, and Dr. Young tries to convince them that she is safe. 
However, when they continue to insist, he becomes irritated and brings them to his lab. Meanwhile, Suna is in the lab, and when she hears them approaching, she quickly rushes to hide. When they arrive, the parents discover their daughter lying unconscious on a surgical table with machines around her head. They begin to freak out, but Dr. Young assures them that she's fine and he's just doing an experiment on her. He tells them about his research and tells them how he resurrected his dead daughter. He opens a cupboard to reveal his daughter's upper torso, encased in glass and with her heart pumping. However, the parents immediately rush to save their daughter. They begin to scream and intervene with the machine, causing the girl to have a convulsion and die. Seeing this, Dr. Yang becomes enraged and stabs the girl's father to death. Meanwhile, Suna hides in a corner, watching everything, when suddenly Dr. Yang approaches her with a sinister smile. He then grabs her and places her on the operating table. He informs her that the water she was given has already completed half of the task and begins the process of collecting the regenerated fluid. Meanwhile, Namsoon and his crew arrive at the building and Tiger informs the soldiers that he's here to deliver supplies. However, since it's not their delivery day, the soldiers become suspicious and begin inspecting the vehicle. So Namsoon instantly begins firing at the soldiers and ends up killing them all. Following this, they make their way into the building and Dr. Yang, who's about to begin his experiment on Suna, soon hears the news. The group rushes inside and walks into a gloomy basement when the soldiers suddenly stop following them. The reason for this becomes clear when a horde of hybrid zombies attacks the trio. They get into an intense fight and Yun Ho becomes emotional when she discovers that the co-workers she came for have turned into zombies. In the end, the trio defeats these zombies and moves forward. Soon, Yun Ho runs upon Sergeant Quan, who invites her to join their team. However, she refuses and attacks him, but it doesn't affect him. After a tense struggle, he eventually stabs her and tosses her out of the apartment. Moments later, Ji Wan captures the teacher and asks her to take him to Suna. On the way, they come across Sergeant Quan, but Nam Soon urges Ji Wan to leave, claiming he will deal with him. Meanwhile, Dr. Yang extracts the fluids from Suna's body and injects them into himself. However, since she had not drunk a drop from the bottle of water, the secretion from her pituitary gland had not been modified to be used. Due to this, Dr. Yang begins to transform into a mutant after injecting it into his body, and he starts convulsing. At that moment, Ji Wan arrives to save Suna, but an officer kicks him from behind and beats him without mercy. Meanwhile, Nam Sun and Sergeant Quan engage in a deadly struggle, and Quan sustains no physical damage. Eventually, Nam Sun manages to chop off his head and put an end to his life. By this point, Dr. Yang realizes that it's too late to undo the damage he's caused. Instead of thinking about the children in the building, he detonates a bomb and selfishly rescues himself. He packs what little remains of his daughter in a suitcase and steps outside. The parents realize that he's responsible for their missing children and begin violently attacking him. Meanwhile, Yan Ho, who turns out to still be alive, regains consciousness. She and Nam Sun head inside and manage to help Suna and Ji Wan escape from the fire. While the parents are attacking Dr. Yang, his serum is also destroyed. In a fit of anger, he grabs a gun and starts shooting at those who were kicking him. Ironically, he accidentally shoots at the suitcase and the liquid that was keeping his daughter alive drains out of the box. This makes him very upset and he bursts into tears. He then tries to justify his actions by calling everyone else evil and threatening to murder them all. However, before he can do anything, Nam Sun repeatedly shoots him and ultimately blows his brains out. At that moment, it suddenly starts raining after six months of drought, which excites everyone. Yun Ho stays behind in the apartment to restore it, while Nam Sun's gang leaves and returns to their settlement. On the way, Suna visits her grandmother's grave and breaks down in tears. In the final scene, 
she's seen running the butcher shop with Nam-sun and Ji-won.